Well, thank you so much. Um, and I want to start off just a little bit about myself, uh, and I'm sure the Senator will as well. But uh, my name is Brian Baldrige, a uh, local guy here. Uh, grew up in that cow barn a lot in 4-H, grew up in that hog barn over there a lot in 4-H. This is home base. I'm from Cherry Fork. Um, started, uh, you know, started kind of farm boy growing up and uh, started in the, in the fire department. And I look back at the age of 18, see Dave Murphy right here, classmate of mine from North Adams. Uh, started with the local government, started in the fire department. And uh, that was probably the seed that sparked me where I am today. Um, that got me involved with township government. And then the next step was county government, county commissioner. And, uh, you know, when, when term limits come in, we have uh, representatives that are term limited out, like uh, Senator Johnson was, that seat came open. And uh, two years ago, I ran for state rep. So that's that's what got me here today. That's what got me uh, fighting for, Columbus, uh, for for Adams County, Southern Ohio, um, in Columbus. Um, so, so that's kind of my introduction. Um, I don't know what the forum's going to be, how we want to do this. We just kind of want to go over some of the things that are going on in Columbus. Do we want to bring both of us up and let him kind of go through the bio um, on himself and kind of we can bounce off each other? We have two microphones if you would like yeah. to. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is going to be casual. This is going to be fun. Um, uh, but but Tony said one of the things that he really touched on, uh, you know, one, registering a vote, casting our vote, that's a God-given freedom. Um, and, and many folks have given their lives for that freedom. And it's one of the things, uh, you know, touched on this group, Adams County Stands United, the key is stand up. We as a community, we as a county, we as Southern Ohio, we as a state, we as a country have to stand up and uh, and fight for God given freedoms. Uh, these elections are important. So I think probably a, a good forum, maybe I'll kind of let the Senator kick off as far as his background. Uh, we're good friends, have been for, for many years. And then we'll kind of go back and forth and make sure you're thinking of those questions. Thank you, Brian. How are you? All right. How y'all doing? All right. Good. How many of you have ever heard of me? Yeah. A lot. That's pretty good. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, what you may not know is my mother and her family is from Adams County. Uh, she was born in 1936 in Rome. Uh, and uh, being born in Rome, she was born in the house, and her grandpa, uh, Mr. Knopf, uh, had a mule, and he had a plow, and he had no means of support other than what he raised in Rome, Ohio, in the Great Depression. Um, and they moved over to the west side of Portsmouth, and uh, she went over there when she was maybe five or six years old, and most of what she learned and taught me she actually learned in those years in Adams County. To this day, she can can beans, and she can tell you how far to put the beans apart, you know, when you're planting them, and she can tell you, you know, how to do this and how to do that, uh, if you ever had to survive. And then growing up in the 60s, I was born in 1957, grew up in the 60s, I didn't understand any of that. That's the way I was raised, though. My dad was a Navy veteran, Korean War, I uh, got an uncle who went to Vietnam, had seven tanks shot out from under him, uh, came home and uh, didn't fit well coming back. Worse than PTSD, uh, just didn't fit well. But love my Uncle Steve. So I'm related to the Frost and the Noss over here. Um, I was raised to love my country. I actually joined the military as an older gentleman. So I joined the National Guard as a fourth year medical student, and I was an older medical student, and uh, spent about 10 years before I had to do anything, and then 9-11 happened. 9-11 happened, we all went and did something. By the time I was a colonel, and I had a lot of doctors to deploy overseas, I went three times to Iraq, and flew over Iraq as a flight surgeon. I was a county coroner inside of the county, for eight years, and during those eight years, we were battling the beginnings of the pill mills and the opioid epidemic, and my job as county coroner was to document what was killing people, and I did, and my data was used by the state to figure out how to get their arms around the beginnings of the problem. I ran for state representative and wrote House Bill 93, which closed the pill mills, which were causing most of the addictions. 
And then since then, I've been trying to treat people and get them better, trying to do things to make that problem not as big as it was. But through it all, you heard me say the Pledge of Allegiance. If you were cheating and looked at me instead of the flag, you saw me standing tall. Even though I'm fat and old, I still do my best. And I hope you heard how much I actually respect my flag. I stand for my flag and I kneel for God. Amen. Amen. My core, core belief, and listen, you know, some people look at Facebook, most people say, I don't want to look at that stuff. But if you go back and look at my Facebook, it goes back to 2009, you're going to see what I stand for. Just stab back there, scroll through, find something. And what you're not going to find is me being mean to people, being negative to people. What you are going to see is me doing my best to set a good example and show people which way to go. I'm a doctor. I've been a doctor for 30 years. I'm a family practice doctor. I'm thinking about retiring. <laughs> thinking about. But I've been doing that for 30 years. I didn't have to get involved in state government, but I felt called to do it. If you put God in your heart and you listen to your heart, you generally wind up in a pretty good place. Now, when I was fighting with folks to get what we need for Southern Ohio, it always didn't feel like I was in the right place. Politics is a mean, mean deal. You know, I noticed that, uh, I, I didn't know this group from Adam, but I told Brian the other day, I said, hey, what's the deal with this group? He said, what do you mean? He said, well, I saw Mr. Hall's post, and, and uh, almost immediately someone said, well, those guys are completely worthless. I said, who's that guy? You know? I don't know if I want to go over there. No, I was coming over no matter what. <laughs> but, you know, it's just that sort of thing. Give somebody a chance, right? And understand where we're coming from. There are people that want to take every one of your Bill of Rights away. Not just the Second Amendment, but let me tell you. If you can attack the Second Amendment, you can attack anything. If you lose anything in the Bill of Rights, you've lost the whole Bill of Rights. And they've been taking it away a piece of the time for the last 50 years. Brian and I see eye to eye on this. There are a whole bunch of legislators up there in the state of Ohio that also see this way. If it weren't for that, strong Ohio would have already passed. It ain't going to pass. Not through this Senate House, not through this Senate. So I'm 100% Bill of Rights, which means that I disagree when they took the took the Ten Commandments out of the out of the schools here in Adams County. But they did, and they'll take your guns away if they can. At some point, we got to say no, and then listen. There's a great civil rights leader named Martin Luther King, Jr. that stood up against indignity and stood up against prejudice and he didn't call people to riot and throw bricks and torch buildings. But on the other hand, when they tried to take his rights away, he didn't quit. People marched in the streets. When they took the second amendment, they took the uh, the Ten Commandments out of out of the school. We're law-abiding folks. What did we do? When we fought the battle all the way to the end, we said, "Darn, I guess that's how it is." What would Martin Luther King have done? What would Christians all across the country have done if we were united? What if every Christian in America said, "You're not taking the second. You have to take those those Ten Commandments out of the schools." They belong there. If you're going to try to do that, our kids ain't coming to school. If every Christian in America was united. Now, we're not all Christians. And you don't have to worship this way or that in this country. You can choose to stay home and not go to, go to church on Sunday. You don't have to go to church on Sunday. It's your choice. It's one of the great things about America. But now let's look at the Second Amendment. We can let people keep taking things away or we can say we're done with that. And like you're all here today, united, you can get around all the sharp elbows and all the hurt feelings, 
and whether I'm a Democrat or a Republican or Independent, and you can say there's an American, and an American standing up for my rights, I would try to figure out how to help that guy. Now this gentleman over here then goes and said, hey, tell him what you actually do. Well, as a state senator, I'm one of 33. As a state representative, Brian is one of 99. And not everybody sees the way we see. Two houses, Senate and, and, and the uh, House of Representatives. And then the governor is the executive. In Ohio, in the last 50 years, the executive has gotten more and more and more power. One of the things that happened with term limits, a guy like Brian is going in eight years. I was in that job for eight years. Everybody says, okay, I don't agree with Johnson, but I can wait him out. Guess who was my governor for eight years? Kasich. Kasich. So I not only did with the heartbeat bill, which I supported the whole time I was there, we came one vote of, of overriding our own governor, who was a Republican, and we failed. And then, you know, my Second Amendment legislation, I fought for Second Amendment legislation the whole time I was there. Every piece of Second Amendment legislation that took place in that eight years I was involved in, a lot of it was mine. Now, do you know that? No, because, listen, I wasn't in the newspaper talking about it. I'm still not. But take it to the bank. If you go look it up, if you talk to the people that actually had the names on the bills, say, where's Terry Johnson in this? He was instrumental to it. But we couldn't get our Second Amendment legislation passed. We couldn't get constitutional carry. We couldn't get duty to retreat. We couldn't get all kinds of things done. Because the governor. You got to override him. And we didn't have the votes to do that. One to 33, one to 99. So I want to touch on what he, what he just talked about, and it was eye-opening for me. Uh, you know, I've been involved, uh, like I said, as a trustee and a county commissioner, and been involved with our state association. So I've been in Columbus. So I thought, boy, I, I get this. You know, I got a lot, a lot to learn, but I get it. So I went up and was shadowing. And the day, um, the day I was shadowing uh, was in, would have been November, late November, lame duck session, which it just gets crazy. Lame duck is the point between the election in November and the end of the General Assembly, which is the end of the year. But I was up there for an afternoon, and uh, duty to, duty to uh, retreat was on the floor. And I was in his office with his staff. Oh, my goodness. This guy was stressed, trying to save and fight for every piece that, that he could because they were whittling away a little piece at a time. And, and I'm, I'm going, Wow. You know, he truly is up there fighting um, for our true, our Second Amendment rights. There's no doubt. Because every piece that they were cutting away on it, he was like, really? You know, and, and, and it was a tough fight. And, uh, you know, you still got some legislation passed, but they, they, they got their pieces. And to point out about the numbers, I hate to make a little bit of a line in the sand, but when you take Cincinnati, the, the, he mentioned 99 state reps. You take Cincinnati... Columbus and Cleveland. Cincinnati, I think, has eight or nine reps. Not sure on senators. Uh, Franklin County, Columbus has got, I think they've got nine state reps. And Cuyahoga has 11. Cuyahoga, I think we've got two Republicans. Not to talk politics. I'm going to say conservatives. The rest are very, very liberal. Franklin County, there's one conservative. Everybody else is very, very liberal. Hamilton County is not quite as bad. Cincinnati's fight's not quite as bad. I think we've got four down there that are conservative. But, you know, the struggle we get in, it, it truly does. Those battles that, uh, that we fight for Southern Ohio, rural Ohio, Appalachia, uh, our freedoms, uh, they're in jeopardy from, from the folks uh, from the three C's, I call it. Um, and they have a lot of population. And the number of representatives and senators in the state of Ohio are based on population. I cover Adams County, Sayota County, and we call it the sliver on the river, the city of Ironton. The senator goes from Claremont County, Brown, Adams, um, Sayota, and then does the sliver as well. So he goes all the way from Claremont through here. So in, in Hamilton County, they've probably got three senators, three, three, three senators, so the population is really, really um, concentrated. That's common sense. But to that point, that means with what we're going through right now, we have to make sure our voices are heard. 
Um, we're two folks. We're in, we're across the street from each other. He's in the Capitol. I'm in the right building. We come together on the floors. We work together. Our 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 chambers work together. And then uh, right now we 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 are challenged. We challenge the executive branch. Uh, we challenge the governor each and every day um, with what's going on. It's disheartening to be in Columbus at times right now. To see the, the, I don't know if anybody's driven by the Capitol in the last six months, but it really, really upsets me to see the plywood over the windows and the destruction and the painting and all the graffiti, all the negative graffiti, and what they've done to those businesses in our state capital is truly a crime if there ever has been one. Um, I'm proud to go up there, but it upsets me every time I pull in and see that capital boarded up. And, and Brian, uh, we're, we're pretty sure that nobody here would have done any of that. Nope. And I think the people here in Southern Ohio would have protected our state capital because it belongs to every single person in the state of Ohio. And to do that, that that's our property up there, and it's 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 very sad to see what they've done. So, but that just to, just to touch on that concept as far as the representatives, where the concentration is, because it all is based on population. Um, we got to be a little bit louder. Yes? How can we help you guys? You know, because that's something that I feel I don't know what to do. This is really what, what I'm trying to do is work with my, my fellow Americans, my fellow Adams County residents. So, you know, together as one. Yep. You know, you know, uh, engage. We talk about it as Christians in our church. You know, we have to stand up as Christians and make sure our voices are heard. Because right now, there's other folks that have a different agenda, a different vision of what we have, and we allow them to have an opinion. But right now, they're they're kind of catching the media. So it's engage. You know, every single legislator, our emails are available. Click. You know, uh, engage. You're you're involved with different organizations that are very engaged. Uh, and, and and that's the key is, is stand up and make your voices heard in a positive direction. Respectful. Respectful. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, Brian, he's, he's hitting the nail right on the head, uh, the engagement part. Well, how do you do that? It's as simple as sitting down at your computer, or if you don't have a computer, sitting down at your desk, hammering out a little note, send it off to the state house care of Brian Baldridge or Terry Johnson, and say, I hope you share this with the governor. Okay? Now, that's as simple as it can be. Uh, we get all kinds of stuff up there that's not respectful and obviously done by someone comes up with an idea and then every, like 500 people send the exact same thing. Nobody pays attention to that. But, you know, someone living here with an actual name and an opinion and you're willing to put your name on something, you say, you know what? I disagree with the way you're doing things with this pandemic. And say why? I disagree with the fact that we haven't brought the people to justice yet that trashed the state house. I disagree with this or that. Or, you know what? Governor, I agree with you. Senator, I agree with you. If you agree, boy, that'd be wonderful. Get a note where somebody actually agrees with me, it'd be good. You know, but we pass that stuff along. Otherwise, it's just Brian saying, you know what? I, this is what I'm hearing. No, this is what they're saying. Here they are. When that that day happened, I talked about the heartbeat bill. Uh, how many people do you know that were in favor of the heartbeat bill? They're just pro life as the day is long. How many people? How many people in here, are, you know, in favor of pro pro life issues? Well, when I walked from my office, then I was over in the House of Representatives. When I walked my office down the hallway and into that, into that House of Representatives chambers, I didn't have any pro-lifers there. I walked a gauntlet of highly activated, highly motivated, middle finger waving, cursing, horrible expletives about what an awful human being I was as I walked into that, into that chamber to cast my vote for the weakest and the most innocent among us. And I held my head high. You know what I thought? I thought, you know what? A couple years ago, I was flying over Iraq in a Black Hawk helicopter, and had we crashed, 
and the good guys hadn't gotten to us, the bad guys would have got us, and they'd have their little phones and been filming us, and it wouldn't have been a good day. These people do not scare me. They don't scare you. But what I need you to do is think about getting involved. How can one person get involved? You could be at the state house. You don't have to be. But if you could be, wouldn't that be wonderful? Come visit Brian. Come visit me. Write us letters and we'll pass them along. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I'll touch on something you just mentioned. I always say, if you got and many of us are busy in our lives, uh, whether it be families, whether it be work, whether it be your own individual uh, you know, challenges in life, but my door is open, and I'm sure the senators as well. If you want to come to Columbus and spend an afternoon, we'll make sure it's a busy day um, when committees are going on, because it is very interesting. It, now, now our minds are probably a little warped because we really like the debate, the, the political side of it, and that strong discussion fight for for Southern Ohio. But it is. I've had many people do it already since I've been in. You know, I'm. Um, Oh, what do we call it? 18, 19 months into this, and I've had folks come up and say, "Wow, you know, just to think about the the process that we go through, you know, bills drop." And, and one of the things I want to touch on something kind of the, the legislative process, because as a group, um, with your your uh, your vision as a group, you look at, it, and it, it probably scares you really when you see people drop bills and you hear of a bill that says. It's anti-gun as it comes, and it's a legislator from downtown Cleveland, and they have wrote a bill that's going to take all our guns, or they're going to infringe on our liberties each and every day. So anybody as a legislator, Senate and or House, can draft a bill and present it and introduce it onto the floor. Right now, I think the House, we're over 100, uh, 750 bills. The Senate's mid-400s, maybe. So there's a lot of bills floating out there, and just because they're introduced does not mean they'll go anywhere. But it does make us as individuals realize there are folks who want to take away a lot of our freedoms. Um, they introduce those bills each and every day. At first it got me very nervous when I was up there, and then realized that, okay, they are allowed to do that. But that, a lot of times, is as far as it goes. And that's the positive of having the conservative views in the House and in the Senate being in leadership. Um, I'm going to touch on some, you know, we've had change with the Speaker of the House. Some of you might have heard, some of you might not have heard, but there's a change. And I was at an event last week, and they said, you know, the previous Speaker was pro-Second Amendment as they come, and we're worried about the new Speaker. Well, Bob Cup is the new Speaker of the House. He's a great guy. He's a great individual. And he's also a great legislator. He came from local government. He was a county commissioner, state senator. He's also served Ohio as a Supreme Court justice. And the, the House is strong Second Amendment. The Senate is strong Second Amendment. Right now, we are in good shape. Uh, in between both chambers. Does that mean there isn't a fight? Absolutely, it's a fight each and every day. But to reiterate here at home, we are strong in those stances. So, I mean, so from that standpoint, it's and Brian, good. Piggybacking on that, you know, like I, I mentioned, the, the folks were there to, to, to give me the finger when I walked in for the, sec, for the uh, pro life legislation. Um, when we have a Second Amendment bill, the folks that don't want you to do any of this, to have your guns, are there in mass. They've been financed, they've been organized, and they're there giving me the evil eye every time I'm a... Doesn't bother me. Like I said, you know, I, I'm cut from a different mold. I'm, I'm 63 years old, and I've done things they can't even imagine. Uh, so they're not going to scare me, they're not going to intimidate me, they're not going to shame me. They're wrong. I would be voted for this if they were right. You know? Well, they have to <laughs> the boys are, are happy to use it. Now, now the, the Second Amendment people, they haven't done that. Uh, but the pro-abortion pro people did. Second Amendment people are there, though. The anti-Second Amendment people are there. And wouldn't it be nice in those committees when we're hearing these bills if we had 
pro-Second Amendment people there. It's a long way. It's a long way. And I wouldn't wish a trip on anybody. And you could even have an accident on your way up. I wouldn't want that on my, on my heart. But you know what? When something matters, you get in the car, you load up, and you go. And if you get up there and you don't know where you're going, he's got staff, I've got staff, they'll tell you how to get where you need to go. And then when those people are sitting there with the red shirts trying to make me feel bad about protecting the Second Amendment and the Bill of Rights, I'll have people sitting there saying, you know what, we support you. And then the other people that are on the fence that only see those people in those red shirts saying how bad we are, it might just sway some of them because not every Republican is as conservative as Brian and me. Right? And then as far as, as, far as that Republican thing goes, Again, if you look at my Facebook, because that's just my life in front of you, and you go back to political affiliation, you know, like, you know, are you, what's your religion? I put it on there. I'm Christian. And, 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 and what's your political affiliation? I got conservative written there. I'm only in the Republican Party for as long as it's conservative. And I can't go to the other party because they've got people that want to turn us into a communist state. Socialism's good. Communism is good. Mao Zedong wasn't so bad. You know, give me a break. That's, that's not the America I grew up in. That's not the America my great-grandfather. He used to throw my mom and a couple other little toddlers up on that plow to hold it down as he went back and forth through the fields down the road. He knew what it was like to raise a family and be responsible for them and to be a good American. I'm, I'm built in a different way. Hey, did I hear you rattling off an AR-15? Absolutely. Good job. I, uh, I did that several times in my campaigns back when I was first running out to the Cider County Fairground. And one time I had a really neat shotgun. And I was on a military mission over in Serbia at the same time that was going on. And uh, I got over there, and uh, one, of my, one of my hosts over there in the Serbian military could not believe that a politician anywhere could give away a shotgun. <laughs> and I said, well, last year I gave away an AR-15. He just it was blew him away. <laughs> That's the fun things uh, when you represent districts like I do and like the senator does that are very pro-Second Amendment, pro-freedom, uh, pro our, our rights, our individual rights each and every day. It truly is a joy to represent the district we have. Because you know, I can't imagine some of these folks who maybe come from a base uh, of kind of conservative views, but then they also have to represent a lot of the, get into some urban areas and maybe the, the uh, geographical area changes. So they're challenged. But uh, for, for us, it's, it's great to, uh, to re represent Southern Ohio. I want to touch on one other thing that a lot of folks don't think about from the dynamic of legislation in Columbus, and the senator touched on it, and that's term limits. You like them? Don't like them? It doesn't matter to me, but to the point, we have folks that come to Columbus. We're there. I'm there for eight years. The senator's in his position for eight years. For me, it's four terms. I run every two years. The senator runs every four years. So, but after that, it's gone. The senator was involved in local government as a county coroner. You know, I, I stated I was trustee commissioner. But there are folks that wake up and go to Columbus with no background and local government, and that's okay. They can bring a different view. But to that point of understanding when they push for laws in Columbus, realizing what it does to our communities, what it does to our local governments, what it does to you know, the townships, the counties, the, you know, all the different things. And those term limits, there, there's a learning curve going to Columbus. I thought I did my homework really well, and it was still a learning curve for me. But there are folks that have none of that background and, and they, they get to Columbus and it's like, okay, I'm gonna fix it all today. And I have to step back and say, well, it didn't get broke yesterday. You can't fix it today, but we need to work through it. So the term limits, I, I love the concept, I understand it, but realizing, I'm gonna circle back around to what it's done. It's given more authority to the executive branch. And it's also given more um, power to the lobbyists yep. and the special interests. Yep. The lobbyists have been in Columbus for 30 years. The special interest groups, these same people have been in Columbus for 30 years. I've been there 18 months, and they're knocking on my door, 
politic me to vote how they want me to vote. Well, sorry about the luck. I'm voting for what the 90th district wants me to vote for. Um, so, so what term limits has done is that quick turnover is given more power to the executive branch and to the lobbying and special interest community, which, again, the need for us to rise up and make sure our voices are heard with individuals across the great state of Ohio is that much more important. I'd like to say one more thing uh, before we kind of open it up for questions. Um, you know, I've said a lot about how I disagree, but I don't know what you're imagining. Uh, everybody on the other side, those people that, that were giving me the finger and cursing me, uh, there was somebody behind me, uh, one of the votes since I've been in the Senate, you know, that I've crossed paths with also, that was some type of a Satanist. Uh, you know, who had some type of a book and, and back behind me chanting something, like cursing me. Wow. You know, and that person as, is at the state house. You know, so that's what we're putting up with. On the other hand, every member of the opposition that I crossed paths, paths with over eight years and I had a lot of turnover, I always had a smile on my face and a warm greeting, and I treated them civilly and as human beings. I didn't get on Facebook and disparage Barack Obama when he was president as much as I may have felt I might have wanted to. It would have been lost in all the other garbage that's flying out there. I didn't do it. And so the people that were opposing me vehemently on Second Amendment stuff, civil rights stuff, all the different things that, that I've done, um, I was cordial. Always had a warm smile, handshake, a greeting, and that's the way I am today. I disagree with the governor on a lot of things. But let me tell you, he's a step up from the last one. And i got to keep a working relationship with him. i got respect for him because he's the governor of the state of Ohio. For me to bring funds to our schools, i got to work with the governor. And if he was 100% against me and any other party, I would treat him the way my mom taught me to treat people. And so that respect level starts here. Doesn't start in Washington, D.C. Doesn't start in Columbus. 